To know that we in the redeemed Christian church of God can pick up the phone and call the vice president of a uh, uh, nation and he will pick it up, pick up the phone. I think it's something worthy of uh, relishing, isn't it? And more importantly, our vice president is a pastor in the redeemed Christian Church of God. Not only the redeemed Church of God, he's a pastor in a papa family. As he's going to Abuja, we are following him. That's where we're going to have the banquet. People of God, we thank God for the life of our vice president and his lovely sweetheart. Pastor Dolly, and these are very busy times that he could find time to come, even though he knows he has no choice. He has to be here. He has to put everything aside because this is his church. It gives me so much pleasure to invite to speak this morning um, the Mr. Governor gave a parable as to supporting us, isn't it? To finish strong. And I know that Lagos State is strong. Now, when the vice president of the whole nation is speaking, he will first speak as pastor, then he will speak as our own vice president. How many of us can see glory ahead? Hallelujah. Put your hands together as I invite to speak to us. Our own very dear. Vice President of the Federal Republic of this nation, Pastor Professor Yemi Oshibajo GC Owen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. With God, all things are possible. That's my first answer to our pastor, Pastor Edo William Ade. With God, all things are possible. The general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, our Father and the Lord, Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboyim. 
our mother in Israel and wife of the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Mrs. Fulu Adiboye. Excellency, the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sanwolu, heads of churches and ministries present, the national overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Sunday Akonde, assistant general overseers and continental overseers present, our host, the original pastor of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Region 20, and senior pastor of RCCG, City of David, Pastor Idowu Iluyomade, and his dear wife, Pastor Mrs. Siju Iluyomade. All elders of our church present, provincial pastors present, His Royal Majesty, the Oniru of Iruland, Oba Abdul Wasiu, Omobola Olawa, Abisogun II, and other traditional rulers present. Pastors and the congregation of RCCG City of David present, brothers and sisters in Christ, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. I was not properly uh, introduced uh, by uh, my senior pastor, Pastor Edu Iliomade. I am actually the pastor in charge of province, LP48 of Lagos, the Lagos province. Just to be sure that I have not lost my position, I just wanted to make that very clear. You know, thank you very much. God bless you. Since every time, every day, church history is being written, the history of the church of Jesus Christ is being written. And today I will just read you in a few minutes very few minutes where we are in the segment of church history. Very quickly, I will read it. Since, 19, since 1898, when perhaps the oldest cathedral in the southwest of Nigeria, the Cathedral Church of St. Peter's, Akea Belkuta, Ogun State, was completed, that church remained the first edifice of its kind until the Cathedral Church of Christ, Marina Lagos, became the largest and best known cathedral in the world, in Lagos. And it is the oldest Anglican cathedral in the Church of Nigeria. It was built in the late 19th century. And it is one of the oldest Anglican churches in Africa today. In fact, in 1977, the relics of Reverend Dr. Samuel Ajayi Crowther a former enslaved Yoruba man who became the first African bishop in the Africa, African church, were translated to the cathedral. And there's a cenotaph erected as a memorial of him. The church was built by Reverend Andrew Desalu Willen years after the mission of Reverend Henry Townsend to serve beside a worship center as also the meeting place for the missionaries, the Anglican missionaries of the time. Today, we thank God for a historic moment also in church history. When the Temple of Solomon was built, it was recorded and we are told of the magnificence of its gold pillars and its extravagant courtyards. When the story of the Temple of Solomon was built, we were told in detail of every part of the outstanding way in which Solomon built that temple. When the story of Trinity Towers is written, someone will say that, and this will be recorded in history, that Pastor Eskom from had the vision. The Lord blessed that vision, but he passed on before he could break ground. But the Lord ensured that his son Idowu Iluyomade broke ground and completed the first of its kind edifice in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Africa's richest city, Lagos. I'm just telling you how history will be written. It covers one of the largest floor spaces of any building in the nation. It had 14 lifts and escalators, more lifts and escalators 
than many other big buildings put together. On the 12th day of February, in the year of the Lord 2023, on the day that it was dedicated, their father, our father in the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboye, and mother in Israel, Pastor Mrs. Folu Adeboye, arrived at the towers, not in a car, but arrived from the skies in a helicopter that landed on the helipad built on the 16th floor of the building. And he blessed the building in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The proceeds from this building, his builders have said, will be dedicated to the work of the social responsibility of the church, feeding of the poor, building of schools, building of hospitals for those who cannot afford to use them. The story will end by saying that when the general overseer, Pastor E. E. Adeboe, arrived, he arrived not, no longer from Redemption City, but from Redemption Nation. The city has been taken over by his son, Pastor Elio Omade. From now on, we, as we write the history, will name the Redemption City the Redemption Nation. We pray that this edifice that the Lord has built, because indeed the, the word of God says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders build in vain. And with everything that has been done, it's evident that the Lord is the only one who could have put this together and built this edifice. So we thank the almighty God for this building. And we pray that this building will only be the first of the buildings of the historic buildings that will be built as temples of God for the service and worship of God and for the service of humanity. We pray that this will only be the first of the very many that will be built, not just by the city of David, but by all of the sons of Pastor E.A. Adeboe and all of those who believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ must be spread across this nation and across the world. As for the small matter of what the federal government will do, as I say, it's a small matter because it is the Lord who builds. I, will, I have to talk to uh, Pastor Elu Omade very privately on this issue, very, very privately on this issue. And he knows that generally speaking, generally speaking, I keep my word. God bless you all. Thank you.